Let's face it, musicians don't exactly have the most dangerous jobs on the planet. In fact, the most perilous problems musicians usually encounter are high stages, late nights, and grouchy sound technicians. Despite this, the passings of great musicians are often highly publicized and deeply traumatic to the wider cultural community. But these don't come from mid-gig accidents or health and safety fiascos. They come from drug overdoses, car crashes, shootings, and other offstage disasters. It may not be the riskiest job out there, but there can be little doubt that there's something about the lives of musicians that seems to invite tragedy. The Mystery of Biggie Smalls After a brief stint in jail for dealing cocaine in North Carolina, the notorious B.I.G., born Christopher Wallace, released his first demo tape in 1992. Before the year's end, B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls, had been signed to Sean Combs' label, Bad Boy Records. Over the course of his career, he released two critically acclaimed studio albums, worked with icons such as R. Kelly and Michael Jackson, and developed a vicious rivalry with Tupac Shakur. In 1997, however, after leaving a party in Los Angeles, Smalls was shot dead at a red light by an unidentified gunman. This marked the end of the East Coast-West Coast feud which had enveloped the hip-hop world. To this day, the mysterious circumstances of that night have inspired endless speculation and countless conspiracy theories. Janis Joplin Succumbs to Addiction Janis Joplin was a titan of psychedelic rock and one of the true icons of the 1960s. She was one of the biggest female rock stars ever. She first found fame at the 1967 Monterey Pop Festival with her band Big Brother, but soon left to form the Cosmic Blues Band. In 1970, as she was preparing to release her latest solo album, Pearl, Joplin's life came to a swift and tragic end. A short investigation ruled that it was the result of an accidental heroin overdose. Pearl, which was released posthumously, ended up going quadruple platinum. N.W.A. loses its heart. Easy e began Ruthless Records with money he had flipped from dealing drugs on the street and helped front N.W.A. as they rose to fame and infamy on the L.A. rap scene. Just as his contribution to N.W.A.'s gangster image can't be understated, neither can his impact on the revolutionary ideals of black communities during the 90s. Basically, gangster rap, I guess it's like telling the real and not holding back, giving up, you know, the reality from the street point of view. In 1995, however, at a time when he was reportedly worth $50 million, Easy e checked into a medical center in L.A. with what he believed to be asthma. He was instead diagnosed with AIDS and died only a month later. A second wind cut short. By the halfway point of the 1970s, Mark Bolin had become one of music's most famous glam rockers. He had formed T-Rex in the late 60s and soon began to perfect the rockier, psychedelic sound for which they'd become so well known. Over the course of the 70s, T-Rex became one of Britain's most prolific glam rock acts, releasing well over half a dozen chart hits and selling out gigs across the country. After a brief career stumble and a foray into heavy drug use, Bolin came back to form in 1977 with a new album, a new tour, and a slot presenting an evening television show on ITV. Now we have a, a Bolin tip for the top, or a personal pick from some old mates of mine. They call themselves Radio Stars. In September 1977, however, Bolin was caught up in a car accident while coming home from a London club. His longtime friend and rival David Bowie said Bolin was the greatest little giant in the world. Country's Messiah brought down by drink. A legend within his genre, Hank Williams is one of the most important musicians in American history. Williams was born with a severe spinal condition, but found solace in music, learning to overcome both his physical issues and his shyness by writing and recording songs inspired by the music of his home state, Alabama. He found success quickly. In six years, he recorded almost 66 songs, 37 of which were smash hits. That same success battered him, though, both physically and mentally. The stresses of touring worsened his back issues, and the pressures of his career pushed him toward alcoholism. In 1952, he hired a bogus doctor who supplied him with highly dangerous prescription drugs. Later that same year, Williams died en route to one of his shows. The End of Redding's Revolution Otis Redding wasn't just a successful musician and a beloved artist, he was also a revolutionary. For a black musician in the 1960s to utilize his physicality and sexuality as Redding did was, to many, nothing short of sacrilege. His courage, however, yielded great reward. The New Yorker once reported that he was regarded by many as the most charismatic and beloved soul singer of his generation. This all came to a swift end, however, when Redding became the victim of a plane crash in Wisconsin in 1967. Five teenage members of the Barkays, the band backing him on his tour appearances at the time, were also on board. Redding was just 26 years old. The Shooting of Sam Cooke Often described as the most important soul singer in history, Sam Cooke was one of the first musicians to bridge the gap between white and black audiences. 
He was also one of the first black musicians to found a record label and became a stalwart figure in the civil rights movement. His career began in the 1930s, singing in the choir in his father's church. By the 50s, he had released some of the decade's most successful hits. His success only grew further during the 60s and peaked with a legendary show at the Harlem Square Club in Miami. But in 1964, Cook was caught up in an altercation with the night manager of a motel and shot dead. The circumstances surrounding this event have since been questioned, however, and just what really happened that night still remains a mystery. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.